Yeah, I stopped by a fortune teller to get my fortune told and she starts rubbing my head. I said, lady, it's not a crystal ball, it's my skull. Oh, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Beautiful day in Kailua, Kona. Beautiful Studio B today. Always a great location to shoot. Hashtag beat my background. Still, still not trending with that. Why can't I, why can't I win the background contest? Someone help me. So we're gonna have some fun with potatoes. We're gonna do more of a south of the border Latin flavor to our potatoes. Um, I'm gonna do a nice, uh, more of a potato hash with some really, really nice Portuguese sausage. And um, then we're gonna do a potato taco with, we're gonna pretend that you were at Papa Cona last night and you had three of our fantastic baked potatoes left over. Um, I'm gonna just use, pretend that these are leftovers and we're gonna make our tacos with those potatoes as our filling, okay? Pretty simple. And then I've got the fixins here for some beautiful, fresh pico de gallo, pico de gallo, which is a very, very simple salsa. Again, a lot of fun, easy to do with your kids, um, and you get that really, really fresh, delicious flavor, uh, that south of the border flavor. So the first thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna add in a little bit of oil. Um, now, unlike the wine, I'm not going to drink this to test my oil. Um, not as good as wine. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that into my nice hot skillet. I could see it already dancing around. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of chopped bell pepper and a little bit of chopped onion. Really simple. Okay. And I also have down here on my ice bath down below, I have a little bit of this beautiful Portuguese sausage. Uh, this is part of our breakfast menu here. Uh, when you come back to brunch, we have fantastic Portuguese sausage, a meat omelet with this is a featured star. So I'm going to put that in there and I'm just going to start to saute that Portuguese sausage right with everything else. Now, other star of the show. I have over here is I have my potatoes and you'll notice I have them in water. Okay, that putting them in water actually helps not, they won't turn brown that oxidation process. This actually helps stop that. However, if you notice, I'm not gonna go straight from the water to the pan, okay? That water is not gonna be great for what I wanna do. I've got a couple of paper towels here, so I'm just gonna put those down right there, my paper towels. I'm gonna kinda go for a ratio. Again, I'm not giving you measurements again today, guys, if you noticed. This is really, really simple, just feel good practice cooking, okay? Um, what I'm looking for is almost a ratio. How much of the chorizo and onion and bell pepper do I have in there versus my potatoes, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and add those right in there. I'm just gonna get that sauteed down. And this is gonna take a little bit. These potatoes are a little bit um, on the chunky side, but that's okay. So I'm also gonna hit it with now a little bit of salt a little bit of salt, and right here I have cumin. This is cumin. Very, very wonderful spice, okay? A little bit of black pepper. And I have here a nice spice combination of Latino flavors, if you will, okay? I got a little cayenne pepper, a little chili powder, a little oregano, a little onion powder, a little paprika, a little garlic powder, a uh, little coriander, a little cumin, okay? You can look online, guys, and see thousands of different recipes how to make a simple spice like this in ratios, or you can buy it already done for you. Again, this is up to you. This is all part of your learning process, okay? I'm gonna just give it a little sprinkle, and I'm not gonna worry about how much at this point, right? Because I'm gonna taste it, and I'm gonna see where my flavor profile's at, right? So I'm gonna just go ahead and give that a stir and I'm gonna go ahead and let this just cook down now. Very, very slowly. But boy, that looks delicious, smells delicious already. Okay. That's great. That's great. Now, what I could do also is I could cheat just a little bit and take a little bit of this water that I have over here and just throw that right in, and that'll actually add a little bit of steam and help me cook those potatoes a little bit quicker, okay? A little bit of steam action. See how that sizzles up like that? Really nice. 
but it's also building a really, really nice flavorful sauce, okay? This is a great side dish, great breakfast dish. You wanna do this with some huevos rancheros. Really, 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 really nice dish to do. So I'm just gonna let those cook out a little bit, okay? And we'll turn our attention while that's cooking. We'll turn our attention over here to these potatoes that we have. And all I'm gonna do, it's very simple. I'm gonna just break them open. I'm not gonna take a whole lot of the skin, but again, we're using leftover potatoes from last night's dinner. Suspend disbelief. If you wanna leave the skin in, just go for it, leave the skin in. I actually seasoned it with salt, so you know what? I'm gonna go for it, I'm just gonna leave that in there. I'm gonna smash it up a little bit with my fingers. Well, let's go ahead and I'm gonna just smash them up like that, okay? I'll just go with two, that's great. So once again, we're just gonna season that up, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and pull a, pull a side over here let that cook. We're gonna go simultaneous cooking here. That's the beauty of these little electric skillets. They're great balance of regulated heat. If I had my saute pan out, so I'm gonna go ahead and just season this right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do it a little cumin, same thing, a little cumin. A little bit of this south of the border seasoning, okay. Go ahead and mix it up. I just want to get a little bit of uh, kind of caramelization on this, if you will. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. And I can taste this also before I put it down. So I have just a little bit more oil on this side. Scoop this up, scoot this over just a little bit. Get all my juices into that potato dish. Put a little bit more, not much, about a tablespoon, all I need. And I'm just gonna drop those right down. Okay, and get those cooked up. So basically what I'm doing is, I could literally right now be doing two different fillings for tacos, okay? Two different kinds of fillings for tacos. That's making my mouth water already, that's great. It's always good when your mouth waters before you even taste it. It's actually, what's happening is actually the aroma coming up. So I'm gonna let those cook for a second and I'm gonna turn my attention over here. I'm gonna change out these gloves really quickly. Got a lot of the spice on them. So, what I have here guys, I have a tomato, I have some lime, I have a little onion, I have some cilantro, and the star of the show is this little Pepper right here. Now, some of you guys may be saying salon, uh, jalapeno. No, not a, not a jalapeno. This is actually a serrano. This is a serrano pepper. Much, much hotter, much more spicy, okay? I like my pico de gallo leaning towards the spicy side. Sometimes I'll even throw a habanero pepper in there um, just to give it a real, real good kick, yeah? Um, if you don't like it super spicy, go with, go with the jalapeno. It's still gonna have a little bit of kick, but um, even less than that, <laughs> and my wife always laughs at me. Um, I used to uh, think Anaheim chilies were spicy. Um, they're not spicy at all. <laughs> um, but I, I had what you would call a gringo mouth. Um, hot stuff wasn't good until I got addicted to eating hot flavors. It actually um, can be addictive, that, that burning sensation on your tongue. It's actually addictive where you come back for more as you train your tongue to uh, enjoy it. Okay, these are looking nice. These are just gonna be cooking down still. I have both of them going simultaneously. Okay, so again, the question will be, chef, how long do I cook this for? Well, on the potatoes here, these little square ones, I can't tell you how long, the only thing you can do Let's taste it. Still has a little bit of raw flavor to it, but boy, the, the flavor is absolutely tremendous. 
this, this potato mixture here is coming along really nicely. And then we're going to go to the building aspect of this, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and take out this first batch right here. This is already ready to go. This can go right here. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to get wild. You guys know I like to get wild in these classes. Yeah, yeah sure. I think I add salt or something. That's my wild side, right? Okay, I got that one done. I'm going to let that other one go for just a second. I'm going to turn my attention to my tortillas. I've got two varieties of tortilla. I've got, I've never worked with tortillas before. Um, they're corn, okay? You can get the white corn. These are actually a yellow corn tortilla. Now, when you're making these tacos, I'm actually going to show you a fried taco, okay? I'm not going to do a soft taco. What we're going to do is we're going to actually fry that. And I think what I'll do is I'll do the burrito. I'm going to do this one in chimichanga form. And if you don't know what a chimichanga is, chimichanga, just a fun word to say, right? Chimichanga. Chimichanga is basically a fried burrito. Basically a fried burrito. I'm going to go ahead and give that, oh yeah, hear that nice sizzle? That's fantastic. Going great. I love this little, little machine. It's terrific. So I'm going to let that go for just a couple more seconds and I'm going to turn my attention over here before I go to these guys. I'm going to make a quick fast pico de gallo and get this ready. So got my bowl ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and do my tomato. I'm going to cut it in half. Okay. And I'm going to cut these things into little strips. I'm going to go ahead and use the seed and the center and everything. Okay. No waste on this one. I'm not prejudiced against the seeds. Some people say, oh, the seeds are bitter. I don't care. Just put them in there. It's bitter than balance the bitterness. I'm trying to make a nice little dice, small dice. Chop it up. Again, this is, this guy's is super, super simple, super duper easy. Okay. Um, if you wanted to get a little crazy, um, you can add some garlic to this. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and scoop that right into the bowl. And I hear my I hear my potatoes talking to me. Talk to me, potatoes. Talk to me. Okay. You're almost done. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Good. Beautiful. Looking good. So, our cilantro. I've actually washed it. Okay. I'm going to not be totally worried about the stems. Some people, again, are always very anti-stem. I think it actually adds a nice cilantro, e e e e e e flavor. Cilantro, e e a word, no? Ah, it's very hard language when you're doing a live cooking show. Very difficult. Think of a word and then your brain doesn't fire. So, that wasn't much cilantro. It's probably about two tablespoons. And again, like everything I say, guys, right, is if you want more cilantro flavor, guess what? Add some more cilantro flavor. I'm not going to, I'm going to go against my normal practice. I'm going to actually use my knife to scrape that up. I've got a little bit of lime juice. I'm going to give that a little squirt of lime juice. Now again, guys, like I've been teaching from the beginning, it's all about tasting, right? Give it a little salt. I'm going to chop up some of this onion. I have just a little piece, right? And I'm just going to lay it flat and I'm just going to... I'm sure my potatoes are all done right now, which is great. So again, nice little dice. This is not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination, guys. Super duper easy. Fun, easy. Something to explore your culinary horizons with. If you're not too familiar with these things, try the different kinds of peppers. Try a different kind of onion. Do a white onion, do a yellow onion, do a red onion. See the difference in flavor. Have fun with this. Cooking is supposed to be fun and experimental. Okay, that's that. Another star. This is another second star of the show, the Serrano. 
So peppers are actually me measured on what's called the Scoville meter. There was a gentleman by the name of Scoville that actually invented it. And how you determine it is he would squirt pepper, I'm sorry, he would put a pepper in your mouth and once the pepper was on your tongue, he would determine the heat ratio by how much salt was squirted on your tongue to make that heat dissipate in your tongue. And it's uh, really interesting how he, how he came up with that whole thing. And, um, you know, the habanero pepper, it's measured at about 250,000 to 500,000 Scoville units. Um, you guys have been hearing about these ghost peppers and these dragon peppers and all these other wild, wacky peppers that'll basically eat a hole in your stomach and isn't really for me. Um, they're in the million Scoville meter range, okay? This is great. I'm getting a nice little golden brown and a little char on the bottom. That's great. I'll test these potatoes really quickly. Oops, it was a fumble. Oh yeah, that's perfect. That's great. I'm gonna just go ahead and slap it right here next to this one. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe out my little handy dandy electric skillet here. I love these little tools that I have to work with up here. It, it's always gone to what I've taught in culinary school is um, in order for me to cook, all I really need is a couple of sticks that I can rub together and get heat and I can cook kind of always been my mantra in culinary arts. The beautiful thing about that, look at that. I should, I should be doing a commercial. Look at the ease and the Teflon cleanup on this beautiful pan. Maybe I'll get a, maybe I'll get a job as a pitchman. So what I'm going to do real quickly is I'm going to just heat these tortillas up really quick. Um, I don't want it when sometimes if you were to take it directly out of the refrigerator, they won't be as malleable. Um, or bendable if you will. So I want to get a little heat into them because what I'm going to do is I'm going to then fill them up and then we're going to begin to cook them. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little oil to this pan, a little bit more oil right to the pan. See this guy wasn't malleable. See what happens? It ends up breaking. But then this one goes into the pile for tortilla chips. Yeah. For the tortilla chip pile. I might as well start a tortilla chip pile. Never have too many tortilla chips, right? Get rid of this. Let's go ahead and clean down our station while we're waiting. Those are perfect. Go ahead and put those on the side. And I'm gonna drop some oil right in. Let's go ahead and finish this up really quickly. You saw how easy that was. This is a quick, down and dirty pico de gallo. Let's give it a... Come on. So good, perfect. I love pico de gallo, it's so fresh, delicious. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil that actually is gonna be a little bit higher because basically what I want to look at is when I fold this taco over, okay, I want it to almost be halfway submerged. So I'm gonna use the baked potato. Now you don't wanna Chuck these full of stuff, okay? It's not a competition to see how full you can get it. I'm just gonna put that down and let it begin to cook, okay? I'd like to see a little bit more bubble action happening. It's happening a little bit, but it's gonna come up quicker. I'm gonna do three of these, okay? I'm not gonna, again, I'm not gonna overload it. Fold it over. Now guys, when you're working with oil like this, be extremely cautious, okay? It's hot oil. It'll, it'll do what's called burn you, burn you. And then you get a blister, okay? You don't wanna burn yourself, you don't wanna get a blister, okay? Might as well do my lucky number of three. Lucky number three. And we'll just get those ripping right now. Now if I wanted to go even a little bit further, guys, I'll show you guys this. Taquitos aren't, aren't rocket science either. You guys have all had a rolled taco and or a taquito. So let's take a look here. I just put in a little bit less filling and I'm just gonna roll it up tight, okay, tight. 
I know some of you have rolled similar things, but we won't joke about that right now. No joking. Okay, let's do this one in a, let's one, I'm gonna go ahead and get, get crazy and do this one as a chimichanga. So chimichanga is basically a burrito. Now, whenever you go to work at Taco Bell, you learn the universal burrito fold. Universal burrito, I might as well drop my chips too, right? Sheesh, going crazy here. Why not? So, burrito fold over. I'm gonna put it back a little bit. So the center line is here, yeah. So I'm gonna fold it over this way, okay? I'm gonna flap in my sides, flap in the side, flap in the side, and continue to roll forward, okay? Excellent. I wanna put it seam side down. And get that, get, get that one rocking and rolling. Now, again, I've talked about it a million times and let's make it a million times in one. What are we looking for, boys and girls? Let's all say it together. Golden brown and delicious. Golden brown and delicious. Okay, same thing. Uh, you know, it's so funny is that so much cooking centers around that one stupid culinary term, but you know what? It's, it's accurate, okay? It's very, very accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned down here. Get everything wiped down. I actually don't even need this any longer. So he can go bye-bye. Wipe up my station. Get everything off. Cause that's all cooking right now. Got my plate. I'm going to get a clean towel to wipe my plate. Not the one I just wiped down the table with. So that's actually something that we would call in culinary arts is cross-contamination. Okay, If I were to have chicken all over my board, let's say, and I wiped it with a towel and then wiped my plate with it, that can be what's considered cross-contamination. And that doesn't equal fun for some people. That would, uh, could, could make you sick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take my, my tongs. This is more of a job for tongs. And you're gonna grab your taco and look at that. Beautiful. Already starting to turn golden brown. Let that go just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and check door bachelor number two. Beautiful. Yes, and my little taquito. Roll taco, okay. And my chips, all in the same. Look at how beautiful and, and utilitarian this little tool is. And I mean, literally, you guys can pick this up, uh, Walmart or Target, um, probably under 25 bucks um, for one of these. And, and there's just so many uses for them. You'll, it, it, it's, it's a really good kitchen tool just to have in your, in your kitchen as one of your arsenal, especially if you have children. Scrambled eggs, you can do scrambled eggs on it. Um, and you saw how I had multiple areas working as well. What am I doing a commercial for? <laughs> am I doing a commercial for the saute pan now? <laughs> Hi, you can get this electric skillet and look at how much it'll do. It'll brown, it'll toast. Okay, let's see where we are. See, let's take a look here. Take a look at all the golden brown and delicious happening, yeah? Beautiful golden brown on that, that tortilla that I just flipped over. Okay, now whenever you're frying, you want to get your temperature up to anywhere from 350 to 375 is, is where I like to roll. And some people will say, well, 375 is really hot. Yeah, it is. And the thing about it is that it is hot. And that actually really helps your caramelization process really easy. So since I'm not trying to cook something on the inside so much, since it's already cooked, I'm looking more for a quick caramelization, so having it up hotter isn't gonna really affect this other than get it done quicker, right? So I'm gonna get a clean towel. I've got a clean towel here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and lay this out because this is actually something you kinda need to do after you do these because there is some oil that ends up in the center of the tacos. You wanna kinda get that drained out, if you will. Let that go for just a couple more seconds. So I wanna get those just a little bit more golden brown. Pretty happy with them so far though. Chips are looking good. Can't beat a good tortilla chip. And I'm actually, I've got some kosher salt for that. Um, 
The pink salt is actually a little bit too coarse to sprinkle onto a chip. It's not really going to hold too well, so I like a little bit of a... I mean, this is actually a coaster salt. It's still pretty thick, rather thick. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys off. Let them start draining. Oh yeah, my mouth is already really watering. Watering really good. This is our taquito. Potato taquito. Bachelor number three. Stand them up. So what I'm doing is I'm actually, you see how I'm standing them up with the open side down. This is gonna allow that oil to escape out of there, yeah? Look at that, that's great. I'm gonna let that go for just a couple more seconds. And the same with my tortilla chips. Tortilla. <laughs> Tortilla, tortilla, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. Okay, look at that. Golden brown. This is this is getting to where I want it to be on the Frito on the tortilla chips. That's great. And look at that beautiful golden brown and delicious right there on that chimichanga. Potato chimichanga. Okay. Let's go ahead and plate this up, yeah? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this as a taco potato taco plate special so I'm gonna hit it with the three of those I'm gonna slap one of these taquitos right there in the center let's get our handy dandy cutting board really quick I'm gonna go ahead and cut this chimichanga in half I'm gonna actually cut it on the bias let's go ahead and turn that off always be safe get my tortilla chips out look at that oh that's what I'm talking about I like them a little bit towards that brown, deep brown, golden brown and delicious. Look at that color, okay? You really need that when you do these tortilla chips. Don't undercut yourself. Don't burn them either, okay? Burning them won't be a good thing. Burning them can have a tendency to be a little bit, uh, uh, they're, not, they're not great if they get burned. They gotta be that golden brown color. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my chimichanga right in half. Look at that. I've set one down, set the other one up on this end. Looking good. Some of these tortilla chips right around the side. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, oh yeah, lunch, 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 lunch. And put that to the side, that to the side, and we're going to take our salsa now. And I'm just going to go ahead and drop it right over everything I'm not sharing lunch today sorry guys okay so I'm gonna try this chimichanga first I think that's what I'm gonna try for first let's see how we did probably really hot let's see It's so, it's so simple and so delicious. It's, it's just a potato, but boy, talking about stretching your food cost and your food budget, um, potato tacos are a really great budget item. And I'm gonna go ahead and eat the taquito. I'm gonna give the taquito a try. I gotta give it a little bit more pico de gallo. Let's try this, oopsie. Hmm. That baked potato really add a really nice texture to the potato. Uh, really delicious. Super simple, guys. I hope you see how easy that was. I know you guys are all out there struggling to come up with another creative menu, a meal item for you and your family. Um, we're getting ready here at Papa Kona to be able to bring some food out to your house, have you guys come down here, pick it up. We're going to be doing meals this week on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. Uh, visit us online or on Facebook for our, our posting of our menus that you have to choose from. Each different night is going to be a different selection. All delicious, created by yours truly, Chef Chris, here at Papa Kona Restaurant. Uh, so visit us online, papakona.com. It'll have all the information, all the ordering, everything, all the particulars there. 
And uh, don't forget to join us here on Friday. And we're going to actually switch it up on Friday. We're going to leap off of Pancake Friday Day. Do I hear any groans? Oh, no. We've kind of run the gamut on pancakes, I think. Uh, we're going to run into some more creative bar food items, maybe. I'm thinking about taking a binge into bar food. Um, some different creative things that I've been thinking about doing. So, uh, have a great rest of the day, and we'll see you on Friday. Mahalo.